1997 was the last year the Land Rover Defender was sold in the U.S., and even though sales in the U.K. carried on until 2016, it's been over 20 years since Land Rover dealerships here have had new Defenders. After all this time, the Icon is soon to return to the world with an entirely new design and setup. So here's everything we currently know about the 2020 Land Rover Defender. First up, let's talk about price. Now, while the video is technically about everything we know about the Land Rover Defender, I want to clear some things up with the price first. Right now, we really don't know where the new Defender will be priced. If you look online, you see a lot of media outlets are estimating anywhere between $50,000 and $100,000. Really? You're telling me for a new Land Rover, it's going to be somewhere between 50 and 100,000, just like almost every other model. Really? Point is, nobody really knows exactly where the Defender's going to be priced yet, at least not unless you're a Jaguar Land Rover executive. Even based on their current model lineup, there's not too much room for it to squeeze in there and make sense at a perfect price point in between certain models. Personally, I'm thinking that the new Land Rover Defender flagship model will sit between the Land Rover Discovery and the Range Rover. I'm assuming it will start somewhere around $60,000, but again, that's just my speculation. But the Defender lineup could quickly become extremely complex. With Land Rover's special vehicle teams, they're known to take the price of a car that starts new at $89,000 and take it all the way up into the $200,000 hundred thousand dollars the SVA for example so from here Land Rover can really take it two ways one it can go the way of utilitarian now this is really what I'm expecting from what we've seen but there's really no way of knowing the Defender has always been known for being a very basic utilitarian workhorse and while obviously things will be modernized and it will have much more technology than previously I do expect it to be a little bit more utilitarian than luxurious and compete a little bit more with the Jeep Wrangler two the G-Wagon route, or the luxury route. Currently, the G-Wagon is the symbol of Miami, Florida, and it also conquers Russia and Chinese markets. It's very possible, though, that the new Defender competes with the G-Wagon and almost nearly forgets its roots. I don't necessarily have a problem with this, but I think for Land Rover to make the Defender a popular name in the U.S. again, they need to really compete a little bit more with the price range of a very high-end Jeep Wrangler mainly because the Defender isn't necessarily known in the United States, at least, as being good. Jaguar Land Rover executives have said that this new Defender will be even more capable than the previous Defender off-road, which is why I'm personally expecting the lower starting price rather than a base model price of 100000 However, only time will really tell. It really wouldn't surprise me though if Land Rover sent the Defender to the US with the North American model having a higher price tag than the rest of the world. Now let's talk some stats and figures. Currently in the UK, the Land Rover Defender is being tested with a two liter diesel setup. But with its lack of popularity in the US with diesel, it's very possible in fact, pretty much confirmed that we will see a petrol model or petrol version of the Defender, at least in the US, but probably globally. Along with that, expect to see a hybrid setup for the new Land Rover Defender at launch or very shortly after. The Land Rover have already said that post-2020, all models will have electrification in some way. While I'm not the biggest fan, it is good at least to see that Land Rover's keeping up with how the industry is shifting with setting up hybrid models in their lineup, I suppose. The new Defender is also set up on an aluminum chassis or aluminum chassis and as well as an aluminum body, which hopefully that means you'll be able to drive over a speed bump or up a cliff without completely flattening it. One downside to purists and as well as fans of the old setup in the Land Rover Defender is that the new Land Rover Defender is said to have a rear independent suspension. Whereas in the previous Defender we had the solid rear axle which supposedly makes them better off-road, but Land Rover claimed that the new Defender is the most capable off-road vehicle they've ever made. While it's not necessarily a big deal for most people, there is going to be some disgust and backlash from people who take their overlanding very seriously. For someone buying one for daily use though, and to drive around town and do the occasional off-roading, you won. Like I said though, Land Rover have stated that the new Defender will be the most capable Land Rover ever, so 
I'm not really too worried about it in the off-road department. Speaking of pissing off the purists, let's talk about the design of the new Defender. Since we've only seen pictures of the test mules, it's really hard to speculate on exactly what the design will look like, but we can pick up some good design cues and some ideas about what it will look like from these pictures. All we've seen so far are some of the angles, and this time around there are some huge changes, and I mean huge. The headlight setup is completely new with what appears to be a very rounded grill. The rear of the new Defender also looks like it's a Discovery 4 that almost morphed into a Discovery 5 with some heritage and throwback to the original Defender. There's nothing really too surprising here. The taillight design sort of resembles the glory days of the Defender, but I'm sure we'll see some modern touches added. We'll obviously do more videos about the Defender's design as more is released and as we learn more, but for now, this is pretty much all we know about it. Currently, it looks like we're going to see the Defender 90 setup as well as the Defender 110 setup. However, it's hard to speculate on what exactly they'll be named considering originally that was based on the size of the Defender before. But unfortunately, currently, there's no evidence that we're going to see a Defender 130 pickup. It's more likely, though, that we see special vehicle versions of the Land Rover Defender. With the new Discovery, Land Rover announced the SVX from their special vehicles teams, which is essentially the off-road kitted out, extremely capable and very beautiful off-road version of the normal Discovery. We've also seen the Sport SVR as well as the full-sized Range Rover L405 SV Autobiography. I fully expect to see a Land Rover Defender SVX, and if they decide to take it in the route of competing with the G-Wagon for Mercedes, I would also expect to see an SVR as well as an SVA. And this is really because Land Rover have already said that they're not just launching a car, they're launching a family of cars. So with that, I can already see a Defender 90, 110, SVA, SVR, and SVX for the purist. And with that, there could also be 12 other models of the Defender. We don't really know yet. And unfortunately, as for this moment, that's all we know about the new 2020 Land Rover Defender. Land Rover have been very vague with the details about the new Defender, but overall, I'm excited for the future of this channel and what it involves with the new Land Rover Defender. So I'll be keeping up with all of the news and sharing it as soon as we know it, when we know it, because this is a moment I never want to forget with the new Defender. So what do you think about the new Defender? Where do you think it will be priced? What do you think about the different model types that we will see with the new Defender? Land Rovers are my passion, so let's start the conversation down in the comments below. Thanks for watching this video, guys. I will see you next time. Currently, it looks like we're going to see a Defender. A Defender? <laughs> Take the Fender off. Defender it. I'll fucking kill you. All right, I'll fucking kill you. You're recording. I fully expect to see the SVX 